Hydrogen has been touted as the fuel of the future, more specifically of India's green, green future. Because green hydrogen and its potential to transform the country and move towards the net zero emission target by 2070 is what we're going to talk about today on Mad About Markets. Hi, Mangla. Hi, Ritu. And the biggest risk that the world is facing right now is climate change. No doubt, always on top of mind. Always on top of mind. So let's talk about that to address concerns around climate change itself, reducing emissions and accelerating decarbonization efforts is non-negotiable and low carbon hydrogen is expected to play a central role in this decarbonization effort that we're taking across the globe. So, you know, that's exactly what we've got to discuss today. But, you know, is green hydrogen really the hero of net zero? Here's what Prime Minister Narendra Modi had to say. Bharat, जो भारत को क्लाइमेट जंप देने वाला है, क्लाइमेट के क्षेत्र में क्वांटम जंप देने वाला है, वो है ग्रीन हाइड्रोजन का क्षेत्र। अमृत काल में हमें भारत को ग्रीन हाइड्रोजन के प्रोडक्शन और एक्सपोर्ट का ग्लोबल हब बनाना है। well, you heard it from the Prime Minister himself. Now, the latest buzzword in the world of global green energy is Green H2111. And no, <laughs> that is not really the name of a science fiction movie at all. But what it does denote is simply global energy aspirations of achieving one dollar for one kilo of green hydrogen within one decade. So that is what triple one is. Now, green hydrogen is hydrogen, which is produced by splitting water into hydrogen and oxygen, but using renewable electricity. So when it burns, it emits no exhaust, only water, which makes it one of the cleanest fuels that we can have access to today. All right, thank you for the chemistry <laughs> lesson. But let's talk about that itself. Based on the source material and production process, there are basically four main forms of hydrogen. There's brown-black hydrogen from coal. There's grey hydrogen, which comes in from natural gas. Blue hydrogen is, uh, uh, you know, emerges from fossil fuels. And green hydrogen is the one that is derived from renewable energy. Now, over 90% of hydrogen production in today's day and age comes in from fossil fuels and the end products of many of these hydrogen applications are heavy carbon dioxide emitters. This is why green hydrogen can actually become a big game changer, Ritu. You know what studies show? They actually show that adoption of green hydrogen can enable India to abate and guess this, 3.6 gigatons of carbon dioxide emissions cumulatively between now and 2050. And the energy import savings financially as well from green hydrogen can range from anywhere between 246 to 358 billion dollars during the same period. So just how big a market can green hydrogen be? Well, as per a Niti Aayog report, the cumulative value of the green hydrogen market in India could actually be $8 billion by 2030 and to $340 billion by 2050. We'll get to the contribution of green hydrogen overall in just a bit. Well, Ritu, you know, since you've uh, spoken about how big the market is, how big the potential is, let's also get in our guests on the show now. We have a, uh, an elite panel, so to say. We have with us uh, Shishagri Rao, who's the group CFO of JSW Steel, joining us. Also with us is Arne Valentine, who's the co-founder and CEO of Omium. And we also have with us on the program Hemant Malia, who's the energy lead of Council on Energy, Environment and Water, which is a public policy think tank based out of Delhi itself. Thanks a lot for joining in. Uh, let's go across to Mr. Rao first. Mr. Rao, what is the kind of potential that you see in uh, the green hydrogen space? Green hydrogen, I think, is the only route uh, to decarbonize the Indian economy. Uh, so there is a great opportunity as far as uh, India is concerned because renewable energy, we will be able to produce at much lower cost than what uh, the world is producing. So with that, uh, there is a great opportunity. Right now, the India is consuming around 6 million tons of hydrogen. Uh, if we look at the sectors where the demand can come up uh, in near future, this demand will substantially increase. So that is the opportunity which uh, we are seeing as a, as a group. Uh, in hydrogen. Uh, so first, uh, renewable capacity, we are increasing in a substantial way uh, in JW Energy. Thereafter, we are looking at uh, producing green hydrogen using uh, the renewables uh, and then seeing how that can be used uh, in the steel making, in our uh, steel making process. 
and also to see that it can be sold in the market. That is the kind of uh, roadmap we are seeing in future. Well, thanks for that, Mr. Rao. But uh, Mr. Ballantyne, or Arnie, let me call you that. What is the size of the India market for green hydrogen? You know, you're, of course, one of the first players in the country to set up the electrolyzer manufacturing plant, which will actually help produce green hydrogen. Because, you know, we have various estimates. Niti Aayog, for instance, says it will be an $8 billion market by 2030. I, I think it's, uh, you know, for India, that, that could be a, a good number. But I also think there's a potential for it to be much larger. Um, an example of, of how that could be. Um, <clears throat> the European Union has targets to reach 20 metro, uh, million tons per year by the end of 20, 2030. Um, if you convert that into gigawatts and then look at the uh, economic stimulation that would create wherever uh, that equipment is built and wherever those plants are, are installed in Europe, um, you can see how if some portion of that hydrogen were to come from India, just using this one example, uh, it's, it's easy to go past that $8 billion uh, number. Well, hold your thoughts, gentlemen. We spoke about the opportunity, but let's also talk about where this demand is really going to come for, for this green hydrogen that we're talking about. Well, an International Energy Association report, or IEA report, says that the declining prices of hydrogen, coupled with the growing urgency for decarbonization, means that the global demand for hydrogen could actually grow by almost 400% by 2050, and that is going to be led by industry and transportation needs. The end users of hydrogen, now those range from industrial processes in iron and steel, uh, plants to transportation for fuel for light duty vehicles, for the power sector, for chemical feedstock as well, uh, as for the production of ammonia, methane and so on. So uh, lots of end uses for hydrogen overall. Yep, but that's the global picture. Let's talk yeah. about in India itself. Hydrogen demand could actually grow more than fourfold by 2050, representing almost 10% of the global hydrogen demand. As per the Council on Energy, environment as well as water or uh, we know it as CEEW, the demand for H2 or hydrogen could actually grow from 6 million tons to about 30 million tons by 2050. In that, the share of green hydrogen could actually grow from 16% all the way up to 94%. Ritu did speak about this, right? So let's talk about this itself. In 2050, this number could be as big as $340 billion become the largest source of hydrogen in the long term, replacing both grey, brown hydrogen itself. So that is uh, the potential that we're talking about here. Yes, 94% of all the hydrogen consumed, that is a big number. Hemant, let me come to you on that note. Uh, you know, what are the end uses of hydrogen and are they limited by constraining factors for green hydrogen at the moment? So the end users right now uh, are refineries and um, refinery petrochemical uh, and then fertilizer plants uh, because they're already using hydrogen, albeit it's uh, gray hydrogen. In addition to that, we do have technologies that are budding where you can take the hydrogen and combine it with uh, CO2, which is essential right now to meet our 1.5 degree uh, climate goals and then produce fuels, right? So you can produce anywhere from uh, sustainable aviation fuel or biodiesel, you can produce methanol, et cetera, or also ammonia, which is uh, now being considered for shipping industry. So you can convert hydrogen into these fuels. You can also convert hydrogen into petrochemicals. Uh, so a lot of uh, nutraceuticals or for that matter, chemicals that are already in use can be produced from green hydrogen. And then finally, in the mobility space, although EV is something that uh, is taking traction, but when you look at heavy duty vehicles, you know, the 30 and 40 tonner uh, trucks and uh, large buses uh, and long haul, uh, then it becomes difficult to haul the batteries along with it. Um, and so uh, hydrogen might find applications, especially once the cost comes down. Now, as far as the demand side is concerned, really, uh, it depends on where the application is. For refineries and petrochemicals and uh, fertilizer plants, the, the barrier is very low because you're placing hydrogen with hydrogen. Uh, however, something like um, aviation fuel, uh, or for that matter, uh, green ammonia for bunkering, there's a need for technology deployment as well as infrastructure. So uh, that means, you know, additional finance that comes along with it. All right. And Mr. Rao, what about you? Do you see enough demand for green H2? I mean, would you need more assurances before you invest heavily in this space? What's uh, your thought on that? The green hydrogen policy that has been announced by government of India, I think there are some incentives which are uh, being envisaged uh, to, to incentivize the industry 
to produce green hydrogen and also to supply. So basically the major challenges uh, in terms of overall uh, production of uh, green hydrogen is concerned, the electrolyzers uh, availability and the cost of electrolyzers. Uh, and the second is uh, the, uh, the transportation infrastructure, refueling station, there is a huge amount of capex that is required in that. So if you want to really create uh, demand in the uh, user industries and also make them to transition towards uh, use of green hydrogen, replacing existing fossil fuel based uh, energy, then what is required is the infrastructure creation. I think their industry definitely look forward to uh, the government uh, to create that infrastructure by incentivizing either the private sector or under PPP model or by the government itself. This is very much essential to attract the industry to transition towards uh, green hydrogen. Take your point, Mr. Dao. You know, there is a lot of investment required for it and there are incentives coming as well. In fact, keeping the potential of green hydrogen in mind, the government of India has announced a green hydrogen policy in February itself of this year. It's aimed at boosting domestic production of green hydrogen to 5 million tons by 2030. Make India an export hub for clean fuel as well. It proposes to offer 25 years of free power transmission for green hydrogen producers and a single portal for all clearances required for setting up green hydrogen production. Also, there is a facility for producers to bank any surplus renewable energy that they have generated with discounts for up to 30 days and use it as required. But for green hydrogen to really take off, producers also need to see an improvement in uh, the cost economics, Ritu, because it is expensive. Yeah, it is a very capital intensive process and that's exactly what, uh, you know, Mr. Rao from JSW was telling us about. You know, actually as for estimates which have been done by KPMG, the cost of green hydrogen is almost double of what you get from the cheaper alternatives like grey hydrogen. So it costs anywhere between 320 to 330 rupees per kilogram to produce green hydrogen and compare this to other forms, about 160 to 200 rupees per kg from grey hydrogen. However, the analysis by this KPMG also suggests that green hydrogen costs in India could potentially half uh, fall to as low as 160 to 170 per kilogram by 2030, which will bring some parity with grey hydrogen and other fossil fuels, thanks to some of these policy measures that have been announced. Well, beyond supply and demand, a robust market for green hydrogen would also translate to a growing demand for production and consumption technologies. India's own internal market for electrolyzers could actually grow from around $5 billion in 2030 to $31 billion by 2050 itself, which represents a demand of close to around 226 gigawatts. Well, let me ask that to Mr. Rao, because, you know, since you are looking at producing green hydrogen, uh, what are the cost estimates for production and do you expect it to come down over time? Welcome back, this is Mad About Markets and today we've been speaking about the potential of green energy and India's adoption of green energy, specifically hydrogen, and what that could do to realize It would its... make it look so beautiful, right? <laughs> there would be a factory, there would be greens around, clean water, renewable energy, only if this was true. Well, beyond the aesthetics, you know, uh, <laughs> the companies do realize India's potential and therefore a few global as well as Indian industry players have rolled out the pilot and large scale projects that can increase green hydrogen production in the country and its end use in the future. Take, for instance, Reliance Industries, which plans to invest about 600 billion rupees to build a 5,000 acre green energy complex in Gujarat, which will house an electrolyzer plant to produce green hydrogen. Gale, that's another one. It is looking at locations to finalize a 10 megawatt electrolyzer plant, which is going to be one of the largest plants that will be announced or produced uh, in future. And those aren't the only ones. We have NTPC as well, looking to produce green hydrogen at a commercial scale. IOC is the other one, which is also in the process of setting up a green hydrogen plant at its Mathura refinery in Uttar Pradesh. LNT and JSW as well have plans in this space. For LNT, the plans are to invest anywhere between 10 to 15 billion rupees on their green initiatives, which includes setting up a green hydrogen plant at their Hazira complex. And JSW Energy, on the other hand, is targeting 20 gigawatts of power generation capacity by 2030, and 85% of this capacity would come via renewable energy. And of course, we have been speaking to Omium, which too has set the first uh, uh, electrolyzer plant in the country. Well, Mr. Valentine, you know, just last year, Omium launched India's first green hydrogen electrolyzer giga factory. And you've also, re also recently raised some money uh, in Series B funding to expand uh, your project. Uh, what is the current capacity and what are the expansion plans? We launched the plant 
with a capacity of about half a gigawatt per year. Um, and what we're in the middle of now is bringing in and installing all of the equipment and so forth so that that number would increase to two gigawatts per year of our systems that we can uh, uh, assemble together. Um, as you can imagine, when we look at the uh, size uh, of, of the eco economic growth and markets that we're talking about, we certainly do intend to expand further from there and really uh, align with this idea of having India be our hub for our, our R&D as well as our manufacturing. But Himant, we go back to the concerns about uncertainty in demand and the kind of investments that one has to make. But just wanted to understand, is there uh, you know, enough certainty in demand for producers who are actually looking to set up plants, etc.? Or will that continue to be a bit of a constraint? No, that is definitely a constraint because we do need policy that creates that demand. So at this point, there is a lot of talk about demand materializing but it's not exactly clear how it will materialize. So if you look at the market right now, uh, the players, the developers are seriously looking at the export market more than looking domestically. Uh, and that could be a problem in the future because if you are heavily uh, export oriented, then uh, you know the local ecosystem will not build quick enough. So uh, they are looking at deploying capital, but then demand is something that is uh, you know not very clear where it's going to manifest. It's time now for the yays and mays as always, and I'll go for the yay as always. The first one, of course, is decarbonizing energy use. That's definitely a yay, not only for green hydrogen, but for the world at large. Take that point, but a concern that continuously all the guests we've been speaking to have been addressing is uh, the capital intensive process involved in the production. That's definitely a downside. I take that point, but you know, what does it do? It enhances energy security and it makes us energy independent. That's a big yay. It makes us energy independent, but the incentive to move towards this new energy is low because you have cheaper alternatives available. That's true, but think about, you know, uh, me, us being the hub of uh, the, the green hydrogen path and actually being a net energy exporter, the possibilities. We would be, but what we first need, and again, something that guests here have been highlighting, is certainty in the policy framework. We can't really discount that. And what if we accelerate uh, the renewable en energy adoption by the incentives that are coming by? I take your point, Manglam, but you know, the fact is that there is very little research and development that has gone into this industry because it's relatively new and there's also no clarity on taxation of green hydrogen. Some of these are really big concerns for the industry. These are big concerns and I take your points as well, Ritu. You know, the incentives which are there right now, but you know, there is a lot of uncertainty with regards to demand and the capital intensive process that it is. So let's talk about this to Mr. Rao as well. Uh, Mr. Rao, what exactly is the opportunity cost of transitioning to green hydrogen? There is a huge amount of uh, opportunity in uh, reducing our import bill. Initially, we may say that the uh, green hydrogen uh, can be blended by, uh, uh, by converting into either ethanol or methanol by uh, carbon dioxide uh, capture and usage. Uh, similarly, hydrogen can be blended with other fuels. Uh, similarly, the uh, uh, in the EV, if you can use uh, hydrogen fuel cells, I think that will also be very, very useful in uh, migrating or reducing our import import bill. So that way, there are enough opportunities uh, that can reduce our uh, uh, import bill, replacing at least partially uh, the uh, hydro, hydro fuels which we are using today. Well, that brings us to the bigger question, and that is, can India's green future be built on hydrogen? We will start with you, Mr. Rao, uh, followed by Arnie. Go first, Mr. Rao. Well, there is no way we can avoid the hydrogen. Hydrogen is the fuel of the future. Uh, it is not only uh, uh, can be produced uh, in the most efficient manner in future, and it will not uh, emit any carbon. Therefore, uh, in my view, if uh, the world has to achieve zero carbon neutrality and eliminate uh, carbon emission, I think uh, hydrogen is the future. That I think we need to take all steps that are necessary uh, that will make us uh, really hydrogen uh, economy. And also government is introducing in certain sectors a minimum amount of hydrogen to be used, uh, replacing uh, the existing fossil fuels. So I think that also will help the industry to transition as early as possible. We absolutely think so. We think the green hydrogen will be one of the key pillars 
along with the renewable energy sources that allows us to uh, really fill in all of the gaps in our worldwide economy so that we can get to a net zero solution. Um, it's going to take lots of different technologies, but hydrogen generation is really one of the key parts for some of these big aspects like long distance travel, uh, long distance shipping, ammonia or fertilizer production, uh, work with steel and metals, all of those aspects. And it's, it's absolutely essential and important that work with renewables make progress too, PV, wind, et cetera. Without all of those, uh, you can't really go and effectively create the hydrogen molecules you need to then create the green molecules that the economy needs. Mr. Rao, Arni, Ms. Amalia, thank you so much for joining and shedding light on green hydrogen. For Ritu, me and the entire planet, we hope hydrogen or not, the future of the world should most definitely be green. With that, we wrap up on this edition of Mad About Markets. Thanks for watching. See you next week.